Well, they're called a bunch of different things. Devil dog, snot otter. The most common, common name is a hellbender. And I'm not talking about this guy. This is Thomas Floyd. Hey, Thomas. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Thomas Floyd's wildlife biologist, Georgia DNR, joined us for a ranger, Nick, a couple of years ago on Bog Turtle. So good to have you back on. I want to talk about this hellbender, what they say the largest salamander in North America. You right. say the third largest in the world. Very impressive stats on this animal, but this is an agricultural show. Talk to me about the link between a salamander and agriculture. What would you say? Well, the hellbender breathes through its skin. So it is a monitor of water quality. It is the canary in the coal mine yeah. for this type of habitat. Yeah. Where you have hellbenders, you typically have good water quality. Now, because they breathe through their skin, they're kind of what we call an indicator species. Right. They tell us how healthy they are. And what are you studying about this animal with regards to them in this kind of a creek? Well, how many there are in a particular area, what uh, habitats are available, what habitats they're using. Um, and a big question is, is why they may not be doing so well in some streams and, and doing well in others. And it has a lot to do ultimately with habitat quality. The power of nature. I mean, this is what's so incredible. So what I wanna do now is I wanna visit with a biologist and talk about where these guys live, where to find them and what we need to know about them. So let's go there next. All right, so Thomas is back there looking around for hell We're gonna to try to get one on camera, but I'm joined now by Keith Ray. And Keith Ray is Director of Conservation for Southeastern Trust for Parks and Land. Keith. You study these things, hellbenders, and I've heard that they're called snot otters, very flattering name. Why would they call them that? <laughs> <laughs> so one of the hellbenders natural defenses is to release a lot of mucus. And when they are scared, if they're trapped in a predator situation, to get away, they're gonna secrete this white mucus. And it's almost like Elmer's glue. Okay. And if you get it on your hands, your hands start to get sticky, but inside of that, they release a little bit different chemical and it allows them to slip out. Mm. And so that's their escape mechanism. They're gonna gum up the predator's mouth and then slide right out. And that's the beauty of wildlife, what it's doing. So we're out here looking around for hellbenders. What are you looking for in terms of their habitat? Where are you looking? So when we look for hellbenders, they're here in the mountain streams where hellbenders are found there's a lot of different types of rocks. And so you're gonna see these quartzy based rocks that have mm -hmm. a red coloration to them. That's no good. The hellbenders really don't like to live under those because they're round. Water goes around them really easily okay. and underneath is gonna fill with sediment. And that's not good for the hellbenders. What we're looking for when we look for hellbenders are these large flat surfaced or cave surface gray rocks. They're more granite based. Mm. And they're going to, because of the way they cave and crack, they create cavities when they're laying flat in the bottom of the stream. The male hellbenders called den masters are going to okay. make their dens up underneath these rocks. And so those are the kind of rocks that we're looking for. And we actually have to go around and feel for their cavities, their holes to entrances to their homes. And so if you guys see me uh, walking around the stream with a net on my hand, it's actually because when you reach your hand in there, we can't see them. Hmm. And we're gonna bump into things like other rocks, but if you bump into something that feels like a squishy leg, that's probably a hellbender. And because they're so slimy naturally, we use these bags to help us do two things, get a grip when we grab a hold of them. And also when you grab a hold of one, we turn this inside out and yeah. capture it. And then we've got it sealed up in a baggie so that we can then take the time to study it without it getting away or getting harmed. And I've heard that these things get a lot bigger than this bag gets. Yes. And as we were standing here looking around for these things, I want to talk to the folks at home here in just a second as we keep looking and we keep looking downstream about what they can do to look yeah. out for these guys and conserve them. So let's go there next. Okay, so back now with Thomas. And Thomas, I want to talk about what's behind me, this eroded bank. Is that a good thing for hellbenders or a not so good thing? What can folks at home do to help the hellbender? It's a not so good thing. Sedimentation is the enemy of the hellbender. And sedimentation largely comes from bank erosion, which is caused by the lack of vegetation and stream buffers. So folks at home can encourage the planting and maintenance of stream buffers yeah. to maintain 
the banks so they don't erode and produce sediment and streams. Beautiful. And that might mean watching out for livestock that's going to get in the water as well. That vegetation may keep them back. Absolutely. That's good. Now, what about in the stream? Is there something about this stream that we could do to help and maybe letting coarse woody debris, logs and boulders be in there? What do you think? Coarse woody debris is good. Of course, that's part of part of the, the natural system that uh, supports the food web that uh, ultimately supports hellbenders uh, food items. But one of the major things you can do when you visit Hellbender Streams, don't move the rocks. If you pick them up and look at them, put them back where you, put found, them back where you found them. Love that. That's great. This is the kind of stuff it's going to take to help that species that's already a species of concern and endangered in some states. Thomas, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I thanks so appreciate it. So appreciate this. I hope you all enjoyed this one too. And while you're online learning more about the Hellbender, check out the Ranger Nick Facebook page. Check out the Farm Monitor Facebook page. See what the guys have got going on. And until next time, for the Farm Monitor, I'm Ranger Nick, reminding you as I always do, that enthusiasm is contagious, so pass it on. Y'all, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you right back here again this time next month. See ya.